Hello and welcome to this first lecture in this lecture series on CCNA4 uh, Wide Area Network Access with me, Joachim Kjellestad from the University of uh, Skövde. And the idea with this lecture series is just as with the, the CCNA 2 and 3 lecture series that I will go through what I think is the most important theoretical concepts in CCNA 4. Uh, I will do it using a lot of practicals. Uh, I'm doing it primarily for my students and combining this with uh, sessions in class where the students are encouraged to, to go read the uh, theoretical material, work with the practicals with, with me and the other teachers here. Um, I think that the best way to learn would be for everyone uh, of you to do the same. Uh, basically, the idea is that I will uh, discuss and talk about the most important concepts. We will do a lot of practicals where we discuss the theoretical uh, background that is needed and uh, you are supposed to work on your own. And so what we will explore in this course, which is CCNA 4 version 6, is uh, WAN concepts, uh, what differentiates this course from the other ones that's been focusing more on local area network or uh, one-site networks. Uh, we will talk about point-to-point -point connections, branch networks, uh, access control lists, network security and monitoring, quality of service, and uh, we will do some network evolution, look into what's hot and what is coming, and we will end it all with some troubleshooting. Uh, so the teaching method that I'm trying to employ here is called context-based microtraining, and it's essentially a learn by doing uh, kind of learning. So we have those video lectures that includes uh, demonstrations. What I really like you to do is to pause and do the practicals. Uh, I will talk about the theoretical backgrounds during the practicals, uh, but you should know that you also need to read the materials because I will not take lecture time going through all the nitty gritties of everything. Uh, I also want to tell you that in this particular course there won't be as many practicals as in the previous course and that I've listened to you, so I've tried to uh, include pointers for what practical I'm doing uh, in the material. Uh, but this is not a complete uh, uh, complete substitute for the material, so if you are going a CCNA uh, 4 course and you want to prepare for the exam, you still need to read the material. And you should remember to use your teachers as much, much as you can. They are there for you. Uh, so, digging into uh, the nitty-gritty of this particular lesson, which is focused on uh, wide area network concepts, uh, what we'll do is to have a very, uh, very abstract overview of WAN technologies, the purpose of the WAN, how it operates. Uh, what I'm trying to do is set the mood here. So, what we're doing is essentially looking into how we can connect to a wide area network from the position of being the... Uh, sorry for that, from the position of being a, a network administrator at, at a site. And the wide area network from our point of view will basically be what we have to connect to in order to connect to other local area networks. Uh, we'll also briefly discuss what WAN technology to choose, the different services that are there, private infrastructures, public infrastructures, and what you would uh, have to consider when you're selecting the service that you need for accessing the wide area network. Uh, so what is the wide area network? Well, essentially, it is the network that is used to connect different local area networks. So it's typically owned by a service provider or an ISP. And I, I guess that would be the biggest, uh, the biggest difference in terms of everything. You know, you can have black fiber and all of those. You can have your own cables connecting different buildings. You, I, I guess you would still consider that a local area network from the point of view of this course. But what we're discussing as a wide area network is... Uh, what happens when you have to use another uh, service provider. So uh, you have to understand that it's essential in connecting many, many local area networks uh, of the modern world. And there are, of course, a lot of them. And the most uh, important wide area network is, of course, the Internet, which we will discuss a little bit, at least how you would uh, use it from, uh, from a company perspective when you want to connect uh, individual users or many different sites. Um, so, can we say that there is one single way of connecting to the wide area network? Well, unfortunately, no. Uh, there are many, many different types of network within the world with very different demands. Uh, some that are just fine with getting an internet connection and connect to the wide area network in that way. There are other ones that require their own wide area network for, uh, for some reason. So, there are many different ways of connecting to a wide area network. So, and we will discuss uh, a few of them in different levels of detail. But but what we should aware, be aware about is that there are serial point-to-point -point link, there are leased lines, there are satellite um, 
there, there are satellite technologies. You can have a dedicated link where you basically lease a link from a service provider or you just go with a broadband connection. So what we should do is begin with some terminology and positioning. Uh, what we will discuss majorly in this course are the WAN services on uh, the data link and the physical layer. So what we will discuss uh, on the data link layer are some different pro protocols, HDLC, PPP, frame relay, uh, MPLS, broadband solution, uh, and so on and so forth. And we will also discuss or at least touch the, uh, the physical layer where, where we talk about um, uh, electrical, mechanical, radio frequency stuff uh, or operational connections and so on and so forth. So let's begin a very long list of terms that Cisco wants us to be aware of when we are taking the CCNA4 course. Um, so as I said in the beginning, connecting to a wide area network usually means subscribing to a service delivered by some service provider. Uh, and in the context of wide area networks, there are some terms that we need to be aware of. So let's just begin. Uh, and I've decided to begin from the customer point and customer in this case is local network or a local organization where uh, you and me are likely to work. So let's begin with the customer premises equipment, which is basically the stuff that is needed to connect to the service provider. And it includes basically what is on the customer side of the demarcation point. Uh, and the demarcation point in this sense is basically uh, the point where the customer equipment and the service provider equipment is separated. So where in your topology can you draw a line between your, uh, uh, between your equipment and the equipment owned by the service provider? Uh, moving on, we have the data terminal equipment, and that is the devices that is used to pass data from the customer network, the local area network, and for transmission over the wide area network. This would perhaps be a modem or something like that. Um, and we also have the data communications equipment, which is the devices that put data on the local loop. And the local loop is the actual copper or the media that is used to connect to the service provider. And that is also called the last mile. So I'm moving on real quickly. You should have a look at these in the literature. Uh, but finishing off, we also need to know about the central office. Uh, that is the service provider facility that is connected to the local loop. So in terms of everything, you would have uh, or own or lease the customer premises equipment where you would basically have the DTE and the DCE. It can, of course, be the same device or the same wiring closet as well. Using the local loop, you would connect to the central office, which is the service provider facility that is connected to you. And what we call everything in the service provider network is the toll network. Basically, uh, you can you can say that that is where you have to uh, where it costs you money to be. Uh, I had some nice uh, way of describing this uh, this clear using some analogy from the railroad system, but let's just forgive that, uh, forget that, and move along to uh, just a. Uh, just a picture showing that there are many devices in wide area networks and well a wide area network is just another network so of course there will be a lot of different uh, different devices including dial-up modems, access servers, broadband modems, uh, CSU, DSUs which are basically divider, uh, devices that provide termination for digital signals uh, and converts line frames into frames that the local area network can interpret uh, because sometimes the layer 2 frames will look differently uh, using wide area network te te technologies uh, instead of local area network technologies. Uh, wide area network switches, routers of course, core routers and mobile layer switches, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, I also want to introduce you a little bit to a slide that I call levels of dedication. Um, because separate, separating how you can access a wide area network, there are basically um, two uh, two ways that you may want to say called two major ways where you can either have private or leased lines. So private or leased lines would be lines that you either own or a dedicated line that you lease from a company. Uh, in this case, it will be your connection that is yours all the time. And this would, for instance, include serial uh, serial connections or fiber optic connections that you own or lease uh, or there are different circuit and package switched uh, options and then you understand that it's shared networks so we have two uh, two major uh, package switch technologies MPLS and frame relay and we have the old PSTN uh, network which is circuit switched so if we separate the different uh, wide area network services in a picture we have those public and private 
uh, technologies. If we look for the private uh, private ones, we have dedicated and switched. Dedicated basically means that it's yours all the time and, and will include least lines and uh, protocols such as T1, E1, T3, and D3. We have the switched, the shared media connections where we can either have it circuit switched or packet switched. Uh, and the circuit switched ones includes PSTN or ISDN. The packet switched ones are Metro Ethernet, MPLS, Firmal A, ATM, so on and so forth. Uh, or we have the pu public infrastructures where we basically talk about connecting different sites, connecting to the wide area network using the internet, which is the biggest wide area network out there. We talk about broadband and VPN. Uh, connections and we can use DSL cable wireless and so on and so forth so th that was it for this pretty short introduction to the wide area networks course this was it for chapter one if you have any questions as always feel free to leave them in the comments field and I will try to answer them as best as I can